final speaker for the morning is John Sawyers, whom I first knew a long time ago as the very well-informed Deputy Chief of Mission of uh, Britain in Washington. And a few years after that, I was surprised to learn that he'd become head of MI6. <laughs> John today has a very important business consultancy, and he's going to tell us all about everything we need to know. <laughs> thank you, Jim, and thank you very much for inviting me back to uh, the World Policy Conference. Um, it's very hard to build on the, uh, the, variety, the wide variety of thoughts we've had from the first four panelists, but I want to put it into a global strategic uh, context. Because um, <clears throat> there's absolutely no doubt that as we move towards, uh, or rather back to, a world of great power rivalry, where the institutions that we built up in the uh, period after the Second World War are basically in decline and are being replaced by competition between great powers, almost a 19th century world, with the United States and China being by far the, the, the biggest two, um, and Russia, Europe, um, uh, India, uh, being, and Japan being players as well. In this great power rivalry, technology is playing a central role. Let me just focus initially on the rivalry between the United States and China. The United States has some historical advantages here. It has the biggest corporates, uh, like the, uh, the ones we all know, Apple, Amazon, Facebook, uh, Netflix, uh, uh, Google, and so on. Uh, but China is catching up quite fast, uh, not just in China, but beyond China's borders as well. But the United States has a lead in corporate development. Um, uh, secondly, the United States... Uh, dominates the operating systems uh, through Microsoft, through the Android system, through Apple. The United States is definitely well ahead and has global reach for, its, uh, for the operating systems of the IT that we all use. Um, and thirdly, the United States has a, a, an iron grip at the moment on the semiconductor industry and the intellectual property that is associated with producing uh, semiconductors. So that's where the United States is ahead. Where China is ahead is first of all on the Internet of Things. Uh, China, uh, it's estimated, will be producing about 95% of, uh, of the elements that go into the Internet of Things, uh, all those computer devices in our, uh, in our homes and in our, in our businesses, uh, that will hold that uh, together. Uh, China is also ahead in telecoms network infrastructure, and I will come back to that, the uh, arguments over Huawei and ZTE. Um, and uh, uh, there's a question as to whether China uh, is ahead of the United States on machine learning, what others call artificial intelligence, uh, but there's no doubt that the China is making a huge state-led research uh, uh, investment in machine learning, <coughs> uh, perhaps drawing on what President Putin famously said a few years ago, that the nation that uh, dominates machine learning will control the world. <coughs> So that's the sort of the competition at the moment. Let me just focus briefly on, on the telecoms network infrastructure because the, uh, the argument about Huawei and ZTE in intelligence circles, I, I became chief of MI6 in 2009, and we had a big split in the Five Eyes, uh, United States, Canada, Britain, Australia, and New Zealand, between those countries that accepted uh, we have the Prime Minister, former Prime Minister of, Aus of Australia here. He was familiar with these arguments. Uh, there are those countries that refuse to allow Chinese telecoms equipment into their national systems. Uh, and there are those like the uh, UK and Canada uh, that um, accepted some degree of uh, presence of Huawei equipment under very strict controls. And these arguments have been running for 10 years or so. But what's become now is, is what's happened recently is Huawei and ZTE have become part of the argument between China and the United States for dominance in technology generally. Um, I don't think the intelligence argument is a new one. Uh, what is new is that the, uh, with the advent of 5G telecom systems, um, uh, if you rely solely upon Chinese manufacturers, uh, then you are going to be uh, in serious jeopardy uh, of having your systems uh, subject to control by China. Now, that's true if you have your entire system, and India, for example, will, will rely entirely on, on uh, Chinese equipment for its uh, 4 and 5G systems. Um, but uh, that doesn't mean you have to go to the other end of the spectrum and have zero 
uh, equipment from China in your systems, and this is where the argument lies. Uh, but the United States is not only pursuing an intelligence argument here, it's pursuing an industrial policy argument. The United States, through a series of, um, of, uh, 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 of steps over the last 20 years, has found itself without a, a national champion in telecoms network infrastructure. And I think President Trump is trying to re-establish the United States as a player in the telecoms, uh, telecoms world. Um, and it's, I think, a bargaining chip also in this wider US-China uh, trade relationship. So that's on, that's on the telecom side. On defense, there have been some very interesting developments recently. As this rivalry between the United States and China hots up, both capitals have to think about what if the worst happens? We have to, we have to plan ahead to the possibility of an armed conflict between the United States and China. Now, the, the Chinese are developing very sophisticated systems, but are heavily dependent upon the US in certain areas, for example, semiconductor provision. But the United States isn't safe either, because so many components of US defense systems are made in China. And what we're seeing is a move both in Beijing and in Washington to decouple their defense industries so that they are not dependent upon the other country just in case the worst comes to the worst uh, and the two countries end up, uh, end up in conflict. Now, um, uh, I think what is happening in the defense field is happening more widely as well, but it's, it's, it's sharpest and most prominent in the defense field. We have moved past peak globalization. The scale of globalization that we saw developing the 90s and 2000s has peaked and is probably now in decline. As, as both the United States and China seek to decouple their, um, their economies from one another, primarily for defense, but also for industrial, uh, industrial purposes. In the security world, we're seeing China develop an extraordinarily sophisticated surveillance system of its own population. Um, uh, one advantage the Chinese have is they're not particularly concerned about human rights and they have no concept of data privacy. Uh, in the world, there are uh, sort of three concepts of data. In Europe, it's controlled by the individual. In America, it's controlled by the corporate. In China, it's by, controlled by the state. And that means that the state, of, uh, in China, the state have got um, almost unlimited use of your data to control and to know where you are. Now, some of them, is, is the, the sort of um, uh, scenarios that Holger was, uh, was describing of um, if you go to Beijing and you step off a payment and there's a red light, then two days later you get a letter from the, uh, from the authorities saying you were seen jaywalking, uh, crossing, a, uh, a, uh, a crossing when you shouldn't have done so, and here's a fine. But of course they don't use it to control people on the pavements, what they do is use it to monitor potential dissidents uh, and China now has a surveillance system that Joseph Stalin would have died for. It is more effective, it is more thorough, uh, and it's less violent uh, and more accepted by the, by the population. Uh, so in the world of uh, surveillance and control, China is no doubt far ahead of, uh, of all other countries uh, in this realm. And then lastly, just a couple of words on cyber. Uh, cyber, of course, is um, the means by which uh, uh, countries and, and corporates and criminals can hack into um, uh, uh, other people's systems, either to cause damage or to steal intellectual property um, uh, uh, or to hold you to ransom. Um, uh, we all know the cyber world, we all know uh, how cyber defenses have improved, uh, but cyber attack capabilities have also improved. Um, in this area, I think the, the major powers are very conscious of their own vulnerabilities. Uh, in the West, we're conscious that our entire systems are based on uh, IT networks that, um, uh, 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 that uh, uh, shape our daily lives. And if our IT systems were brought down, our banking system, our public healthcare systems and so on, then the scale of damage to our, uh, uh, to, to our stability would be great. It's even more the case in autocratic countries like China and Russia, um, where they feel themselves very vulnerable to um, exploitation, 
to uh, uh, the stirring up of unrest in their countries, and we're seeing a progressive move by autocratic countries to take control of their uh, internet space um, uh, so that they cannot be subject to disruptive cyber attacks. Um, uh, uh, we saw earlier this year Russia experimenting with cutting their internet off from the rest of the world. Uh, this was seen as an emergency step that they might need to take in a crisis. Well, I think it will be surprising if Russia develops the capability to cut itself off from the rest of the world and then doesn't use it as the norm, as the status quo. And where Russia is leading in this field, China is also taking a very close interest. And of course, there are other countries, Iran being an obvious example, uh, which is, uh, uh, which is um, uh, taking a, a close interest in, in uh, 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 in having control over its own domestic internet uh, uh, and separate from the global internet. In the same way that they want to de-dollarize their, their economies, they want to uh, reduce their dependence on the, uh, the US-led uh, infrastructure system. So I think in all those areas, uh, whether it's just straight industrial competition, whether it's the dominance of the machine learning space, whether it's for defense competition, and of course this is spreading into, in defense, it's spreading into the mergers and acquisitions world where every entity, whether it's the European Union uh, or Japan, as well as the United States, is, in, is giving themselves greater powers to scrutinize uh, control of technology uh, takeovers, um, uh, uh, whether it's in the cyber world, this, the, the, the role of technology uh, is central to the great power rivalry, uh, which is going to be the, the, the design model of the world of the coming decade or two. Thank you.